Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be doing a Luma Fusion beginner's guide. So this is one of my favorite editing apps of all time for iPhone and iPad. So I edited on this for about two years before I got Final Cut Pro. Three disclaimers, one, this app is not free. It does cost money and it's not the cheapest, but like I said, it's such a great app and it's definitely worth the money if you're looking to invest in something but you don't have enough money to maybe like upgrade to a better computer or something, this app is great. And number two, this video is a beginner's guide, like you can see by the title. So don't expect two in detail explanations on how to do certain things in this app. I do have a video on how I edit my videos in LumaFusion. I'll have that in the card up top, which has more in detail explanations on certain things. I'll be mentioning it throughout the video. But okay, let's get started with LumaFusion. So I'm going to go in the app and this is the first thing that you will see. So you have all these confusing things on your screen. But the only thing you two need to know right now is to create a new project. You click on the plus button down here and then you can title your project. I'm just going to title this tutorial. Then something that's also important is the frame aspect. So that's if you want a vertical or horizontal video or landscape, whatever you want to call it. So it's either 16 by 9 for horizontal and 9 by 16 for portraits. So I'm going to go with 16 by 9. That's the standard YouTube size. And then we're going to click on this plus button here. And then we're in our project. So this is where your clips are going to come for your timeline. You can change the view by going to these options here and play around with these if you want to see like something that works better for you. But usually when I was editing on my phone on LumaFusion, I always turn my phone. So let's do that real quick. So now we have this view, which is just much more to work with. So now let's get started with our clips. So we're going to import some clips. It's very easy. Go into your videos or photos, whatever you want to import. Then the only thing you need to do is hold and drag it to your timeline. And then it's there. You can see my entire video is now in my timeline. You can also make your timeline bigger or smaller by taking your two fingers and pushing them together or apart like you would zooming in on a photo and you can make your timeline bigger or smaller. Now, the first thing you're probably gonna be doing once you have your clips in is start splitting and cutting your video. So the way you do that is you click on the scissor icon and then it cuts your video. And then if you wanna delete your video, you have to select the portion you wanna delete and click on the garbage can option. So you notice when I split a video, I don't have it selected, but I can also select the clip and split it as well. The difference with that happens when you have overlaying clips. So we might just well jump into overlaying clips and photos now. So whatever you want to add over your video, a photo or whatever, you do the exact same thing that you did when importing this video clip, the first video clip. So get your photo, drag it, and then put it on top. So then you have two clips overlaying each other. And the only difference now that this selecting and deselecting makes when splitting. So I can click split now and you can see I don't have any clips selected. And then I'm splitting both clips at the same time. This is really helpful if you have timing that's important. So you can just quickly split and split and then just select the bottom clip and delete. And then both clips are deleted and you still have your timestamps. So you can either do that or you can just select and then split and then you can just split the top clip, not both clips. So I know that's a bit more advanced for some people. So don't worry, just if you understand what I'm saying, this might come in handy for you later in editing. But that's just the difference between selecting a clip and not selecting a clip when splitting and cutting. You'll see when I have a clip selected, we have some more options down here. So let me just quickly go through them. So this is if you want to duplicate a clip. This is for detaching the audio of a clip. So then your audio is going to be its separate layer. Here you can link and unlink clips. So that's again when you have an overlaying video, you can link that overlaying video to the bottom clip. Or unlink it you can see right here um, there is something go that links it and unlinks it this here is for going to the editing station area I don't really know what to call it but we're gonna get into that later this area here is preset so I'm gonna touch on that a little later I'm not gonna go into too much detail because it is sometimes a little hard for people to grasp but again I have that video in the eye up top how I edit on LumaFusion and I explain more about 
presets in that video. This is your clipboard, so you can copy and paste things. So it will copy some of your effects that you maybe have added to this clip, and you can paste it on a different clip. This is selecting or deselecting a video, so if you want to select multiple clips. And then you have your splitting, your deleting, and this area here is just adding more things to your video. So voiceover, transition, blank clip, main title, and overlay title. So that's that. So now I have two clips here. This one is from my studio tour video, link in the eye top. But now let's add a transition between these two clips. So we're gonna go up here to this icon that looks like the photos icon, tap on that. Then you see you have all these sources. So we're gonna go to transitions here. And here you can see all the transitions that they have. It's not a lot, but I mean, it's enough, I feel like. So they have quite a few EFs to choose from and the way to use transitions so you can tap on it and then you can get kind of a preview of what it looks like and to add it to your project you just hold and drag like you did with importing videos and then just put it in between two clips and then it will have a transition between the two clips you can also edit the duration of the transition by dragging this smaller or bigger usually i like to do like 20 seconds so you can see it just transitions between those two but like I said, they have push transitions, slide transitions, wipes, and then just other types of transitions. Transitions are also very helpful for overlaying clips. So I just imported this photo here and I'm gonna go into the editor by double tapping on this clip. So double tap and it takes me into the editor or you can just tap on this pencil icon to go into the editor. And I'm gonna go to frame and fit and just move it and maybe rotate it a bit however I'd like. But what I want to show you guys is transitions with overlaying clips. So I'm going to go to the transitions again. So I added transitions to this front and the back of the clip and also made it longer by just dragging it. So you can make the duration of the photo longer. And I'm going to quickly play it so you can see, see what it looks like. So let's go. So it pushes in left and it pushes left again, but actually right. So this is something you need to know probably. Transitions, I have a push left here and a push left here, but this one moves in left and this one moves out right. So it does the opposite when you are at you put it at the end of the clip. So if I use the push left transition at the beginning, it's going to push left, as you can see, from right to left. But if I use the push left at the end of the clip, it's going to move from left to right because it's an out transition because it's at the end of the clip. So it does the opposite when you're using it as an out transition. Just keep that in mind when adding your transitions at the end. But that's how you add transitions to overlay clips as well. If you wanna quickly add something into your project, you can do that. Very simple and easy. So pretend this audio track here is actually like music, background music, and say I wanna fade it out. The easiest way to do that is adding a cross dissolve transition at the end of your music, and then it just fades out. So that's really how you can get like dissolves in audio it really does help a lot so you can even use transitions with audio so now we've covered transitions with overlay clips in between clips and with audio now let's go to some in detail with filters and things so making your videos more pretty so this is just a video of us getting stuck in the sand at the beach but i thought this is a great scenery let's film this and um I'm going to go into the editor again by double tapping. We have these things down here. This first one here is the frame and fit area. So you can move your clip around. You can rotate it if you want to make it bigger or smaller. Here is a bunch of options that you can go through. I'm not going to go through all of these for cropping and fitting and sizing. They have so much you can edit here. And they also have some presets here that you can use. And you can also make your own presets by clicking on the star icon. Again, the other video gives more in detail with that. This area here is speeding and slowing things down or reversing clips. So you can just toggle this to speed up a clip, reverse it, and maintain audio pitch means if you want to have, like, if you're talking fast, it makes that high pitch. Or you can just select maintain audio pitch so it doesn't go all high and chipmunky. So in this audio area, you can just toggle the volume or add some filters or things. I don't really play around too much with filters or anything. I usually just keep my audio plain and simple, but the volume control is very easy to have here. And then we're actually going to work in this area right now. So they have so many things in this area. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but my main area is LUTs. So 
we're gonna go to LUTs now. LUTs is basically a fancy word for filters for videos, okay? Um, but the first area here is just color presets, so they just have a few here. This is the area that I want to use, so you have user LUTs, or you have LUTs that they have already on LumaFusion. These are LUTs that I imported from other, where I downloaded from websites or something. Next area we have here is, I don't even know, weird effects and things you can add to your videos. You have Gaussian blur, vignette motion blur, things you can add here. Here are some more effects and things you can add to your videos. Here's are for green screens and even more things that I'm not gonna go into right now. And then here, the star icon is if you have any presets like filters that you've made on LumaFusion and you can save them here and reuse them every time. So you don't have to make it all over again for each project, you can save some. But again, I wanna go here to LUTs. So LUTs, like I said, is filters for videos. It's just way easier to have LUTs so you have a consistent look throughout your videos and um, it just spares a lot of time. You don't have to go in and make the style yourself. It's just already here. So yeah, that's my favorite thing that I've recently discovered. Um, my sister edits on LumaFusion and I edit on Final Cut Pro, but I want like a consistent filter throughout my videos and she helps like upload videos to this channel so she should have that filter as well but i wasn't sure she could get one but it has to be a dot cube file which um works with final cut pro premiere pro and now with luma fusion so a dot cube file is the type of file for lat i shared that file to her ipad and it works you just have to import it and then you can just use them to import LUTs, you just click on this install button here this is probably not too beginner's guide ish bit more in depth but if you have LUTs I'm just saying it helps a lot saves a lot of time you don't need to do anything here is the LUT I like to use usually LUTs are pretty intense so here you can see all these look super dramatic but you can just make them not as dramatic by dragging the slider in the blending mode adjusting that so this is without the LUT completely and then you can just drag it to how much you want for your video and obviously you can do some editing on top of this so Say I have my LUT on my video, I can go here, click on original, and then I can go ahead and adjust some other things. So if I want more brightness on my clips, more contrast on my clips, if I want the saturation to be a bit more dramatic, vibrance. I mean, you can edit a bunch of things here to make your videos look better and get a more precise look that you want. But overall, LUTs are pretty easy to use. You just put it over your video and edit the blend mode. And then if you want to do your own color correction, go here and choose original and play around with your um, toggles and things until you have your desired look. So yeah, that's all I want to go into with color and effects right now. It's just like very, very fun place to use. So play around with it, see what works for you. And now I can also go ahead and just copy this effects that i just added by going to this clipboard and selecting copy and i can go to this clip here go here and click on paste this looks bad but you get what i mean you can also just go ahead and edit this i think this is making it bad so yeah that's how i use LUTs in my videos i really love them so much so i just wanted to share that with you guys if you're a beginner and you don't have a lot of time to spend making your own filters just find LUTs you can get free LUTs anywhere you just search on YouTube and you can do some cool things here also real quick if you want to remove an effect so if you added a filter or something and you don't want it anymore you can either just tap on the eye option so that disables it or you can click on the effects here and then click on the garbage can icon so that's how you delete effects. I have to pace myself so much with these videos. This is so much I want to say, but this is a beginner's guide, so I'm trying to stick, to stick to the basics. Now let's add some text. You can click plus button here and click on overlay title. And then you have your text here. So to edit it, we're going to double tap on this again and go into the editor. And then we have our titles area here. You can use some of the titles that they have here already. You can make your own user titles. Again, that other video on the eye up top, go check it out. But for now, I'm just gonna edit this text pretty plain and simple. Click on your text here. And to edit the text, double tap on it. So I'm just gonna select sunset or something. And now I'm gonna edit a few things. You can adjust the opacity, the font here. 
A cool thing about LumaFusion as well is you can import your own fonts. So if you have fonts that you prefer to use other than the plain iPhone fonts, you can import your own fonts on LumaFusion. It's very fun and helpful to get your own desired look. I'm gonna go with this font. It's Shoreline's International Script or Shoreline's Script. Here you can see it. Um, I'm gonna use this, one of my favorite fonts as well. And uh, I'm just gonna put it down here. But for now, we can just go ahead and edit a few other things. So you can add the face colors, like the overall color of your text you can adjust. I'm going to go with plain white text, and then you can adjust the opacity. You can also edit edge, which is basically like a, a stroke around your text. So you can just adjust like the width of it. You can also add a shadow to your text. So you can adjust the distance, the amount of blur that it has. You can adjust the color of your shadow, all that fun stuff. You can also save this style now. Like we said, I mentioned presets. So I'm gonna click on this star icon here. So now if I wanna add another text, so just say overlay title and I want it to have the same look, I'm gonna tap on it, go to presets down here and find the one we just saved, which is this one. And then there it is. So that's like the basics of adding presets and how to use presets is just very helpful. Usually when you see the star icon, it means you can make a preset of something on LumaFusion. This plus button here, you can add other layers. So here you can see text, shape or image. So if you want to add an image with this, so let's do that. To select an image, just import image here. And here you can see you've added an image. So now these two are linked together, the image and the text. So the you don't have a separate text layer and a separate image layer. They layer together. So that just helps to minimize the amount of layers used um, and just group things together. So now if I go to the frame and fit area, I can move them together. I don't have to move them individually, if you understand what I mean. So that's a little complicated, but if you get the hang of it, it really does help and it saves you a lot of layers if you have to add a bunch of things over each other. You can also put the one behind the other by holding on that and just moving it. So then the text is in front of the photo and then it works. But I'm gonna remove the photo for now. I just wanted to share with you guys like how to do that. But that's the basics of text and then obviously again you can just use some transitions for music you can just get music wherever you get your copyright free music or you can go here and use some of their free music from storyblocks so here you can see there's some footage some background some music some sound effects most of these are not free but they do have some free options as you can see here you're gonna need the storybox subscription if you want to use this like primarily all the music that they have but um yeah, they do have some free music for you guys to use here, but like I said, not a lot. So here you can see some of the free music here, and then the rest you're going to need to pay for. The last thing I want to share with you guys is how to use a green screen, because green screens, even when you're a beginner, I feel like is so important to use. You get so many cool green screens that you can get anywhere on the internet. So I'm just going to quickly show you guys how to use a green screen in LumaFusion. So I'm going to import one from my videos. So I have this green screen here. So how we're going to edit this is we're going to double tap to go into the editor, go to the keyhole option here and click on green screen. And then you have your green screen here. You can also play around with some of these um, options here to get your desired look. But that is how to use green screens. And you can also just go ahead then and go to the frame and fit area and move it around however you want to get your desired look. So yeah, then you just have this green screen playing over your video, whatever green screen you have. Very simple and easy how to use green screens. Just go to the key or options. So that was my beginner's guide on how to use LumaFusion. I tried to get it in as fast as possible because I know some people just want to quickly see a video on how to do something. So I really hope this video was helpful for you guys and I could address as many things as I wanted to in this short or trying to be short video. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and comment down below any other questions you might have for me. Definitely subscribe by clicking on the icon on the screen. Click on the playlist to see all of my other YouTube tips and tricks videos. So that's other tutorials of editing or thumbnails or whatever you want. I'll have that in the playlist. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.